The Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, CIBN, recently organized its 2011 annual lecture. Theme of the series this time was building a resilient financial system to withstand external shocks. When we said to choose this topic for this lecture, some people believe that maybe this topic has been overflowed and uh, we should look at another, at, 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 at another topic. But we can see that with the event of the last uh, few months, happening uh, in the world, in Europe, in America, and even in our own environment, you see that the banking crisis of uh, 2008 to 2009 is still very much with us. We're having uh, uh, demonstrations all over the place, uh, Occupy uh, Wall Street. I haven't seen Occupy Lagos anyway. I'm sure, I hope we don't, we don't have Occupy Lagos. Occupy Toronto, Occupy Ottawa. People are protesting against, you know, the financial system, the hardship, and so on and so forth. So it's really very, very, still very, very uh, 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 topical for us to discuss this, this, uh, this uh, issue today. And you want to wonder, because a lot of people say this kind of financial crisis happens every seven to ten years. You then wonder why is it that we, do, that we don't anticipate this kind of crisis that will come in and prepare for it. Again, maybe these are some of the things that we hear from our, from our, from our, from our lecturers uh, today. Um, Nigeria is not immune, of course, from all these problems. And we are hoping that some of the things we'll be here today will help us, help the players, and help the regulators and everybody involved in financial, uh, uh, I mean, in the, in the financial system to be able to uh, take the right step that will prevent the thing like this happening. We know that a lot of uh, uh, stakeholders, I mean, a lot of stakeholders have, have taken uh, some, some steps. The government have done their own. The central bank, the regulators, Amcon have done theirs. And that is why the issue of bankers also believe that as part of our mandate, we also have to uh, 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 bring this into, into focus and let us see how we can learn from the uh, uh, experience of other, of other countries. Lectures from the Canadian speakers of the Royal Bank of Canada dwelled on the universal banking success in that economy. On page 12, what, how, what's the outlook uh, that we see for uh, the universal banking model? Well, it is somewhat under attack in, in uh, different uh, parts of the world, particularly the U.S. and to some extent the U.K., and it's generally a reaction to the perceived failures of the financial institutions and financial systems in those countries. Uh, during the period of the last crisis. So you've seen legislative proposals to limit the scope of activities of banks, particularly in the U.S. under the legislation known as Dodd-Frank. Uh, there's been a prohibition on so-called proprietary trading, which in many cases is necessary to facilitate client activity. So we, we hope there's going to be a finer approach to that, but uh, yeah, there's an overall approach there that says, to some extent, the universal banking model can handle the complexity of client uh, uh, needs and different businesses within it, which we fundamentally uh, don't agree with. As, as a universal bank, and you know, the universal banking model, some can say it's good, some can say it's bad, but one, the, one good example in Canada where it's, it's, it's helped us out is it's helped us to diversify regional risk. You know, there have been times where in Alberta, uh, one of our oil, our oil producing area, they've needed extensive capital, capital which has come from the industrial heartland. And there's been other times, right now, where Alberta as a region, are, where the oil is now flowing uh, quite well, you know, they're, they're re-sending capital back to uh, the more established areas of Canada. The group head, Wealth Management of the Royal Bank of Canada, George Lewis, speaking to attendees in a webcast, says, while universal banking is a success for Canada, the state of an economy will depend on what banking model to adopt. And what I would say is I'm not advocating in any particular country, whether it be Nigeria or Canada or any other country, that, that uh, foreign competition be limited uh, or that uh, only universal banks be able to operate. I think a mix of universal banks uh, which would be obviously uh, you know, strong in that domestic region, providing a full range of services to customers, supplemented by competition or, uh, or provision of additional services by global model, model lines, whether it be in wealth management or capital markets, is a very effective model to serve the needs of clients uh, in a particular country, and also I think contributes to the overall stability of the financial system. Chairman of the occasion, the managing director and CEO of UBA, Philip Odwaza, says Canada is a chosen model for the lecture due to its economical resilience. 
The example that we selected, which is Canada, is uh, a, a country, an economy, that uh, you, know, you cannot uh, select a better one today. We have heard that this economy, even though it is very close to the United States, we know the crisis we had in the United States, the subprime, the mortgages, the securitization, and so on. This particular economy did not go through this. Also, the banking, uh, the banking industry remained very, very stable. Today, no bank from Canada was uh, bailed out by the government. And the World Economic Forum, which is more like a think tank that looks at uh, every aspect of the world and trying to make life uh, uh, better and uh, this earth a better place for living, has consecutively selected uh, Canadian banking system as the soundest for four years running now up to this particular year. And listening to them, I believe that we are going to quite a lot. We are going to benefit quite a lot. I heard when the chairman and the portfolio manager was talking through the video conferencing, and quite a lot of things that he was saying are the things that uh, we should all be focusing on today. He talked about the universal banking, of which there are different views. Uh, in the case of Nigeria, we are moving away from universal banking. Uh, in other locations, they are still looking at it and so on. So what, what that means is that uh, you, know, you don't have one size fits all. You select a particular model that is very relevant to the system and to your own economy. Participants at the lecture had the freedom to air their opinions. Uh, in the light of the fact that Nigeria is a developing country, I'm beginning to think that we should promote more of specialization than universal banking. We were doing monodyne banking before. We moved to universal banking. Now we are moved back to monodyne. My question is that if you look at the different shifts, you find that regulators do the research, analyze their research, make conclusions, and implement. At what point are we going to have dialogues where a much broader spectrum of stakeholders we look at the data available to the regulators before we make the great shifts. My concern is that come another governor, we will now say go back to the Minister Bank. And then we, we keep on having that experimenting with the lives of people and their total well-being. So why don't we create dialogue when there are going to be major political shifts so that we can all look at the data? Because there are different ways of looking at the same data and have more inclusive dialogue. What we learned is a good explanation. I learned that one. Conservation, conservation, and integrity in the local, and the art. I'm very happy that the Canadian banking is tailored with this banking. The Canadian Deputy High Commissioner to Nigeria, Jean Gauthier, who was also present at the lecture, did not hold back to express his comments. The objective of, our, of the top management of our banks is to the customers and the clients and not to the shareholders and themselves because they are the investors and the risk takers while the customers, the, the poor depositors, the poor guy that will risk his mortgage, his life earnings on, a, on buying a house, needs protection and there is nobody to protect him uh, because that's an investment that nobody knows how it's going to turn out. The other, the other aspect that we have to look is that the banking system is not isolated. The banking system must work with the fiscality of the country and must work with 
the policy set up by the government. The 2011 lecture of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria closed with lessons inferred from speakers. A strong regulatory approach and a good mortgage system are one of the key lessons that bankers parted with.